so the church has been kicked in the teeth over and over and over again because of the the shortcomings of the Mesoamerican model to actually answer just na- just normal questions. There's yeah. there's so much evidence and there's so much research that has not been that hasn't been uncovered that proves the validity of the Book of Mormon here in North America. I bet the car in the driver's seat. I pick you up, but there's only room for me. The only lane that I see is The following is an episode of Ward Radio and does not represent the thoughts or the opinions of KHTS, its owners, or any of its affiliates, nor does it represent the official opinion of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. With that said, sit back, relax, and enjoy the program. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? I bring the energy. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I am your host, Cardinal Ellis, and today I'm joined in the studio by a superstar cast known as Rod Meldrum, Heartlander of Heartlanders, okay? And his buddy, fellow researcher, fellow erudite Heartlander, none other than Bril Hernandez, all right, who are here to talk to us about um, the Heartlander theory, which me and Jonathan Neville have, actually me, I said that it's a crappy name. Uh, makes me think of Campbell's soup and like chunky bits of beef floating around with noodles. I prefer the Hill Kimura Truther movement, which kind of has a little bit more edge to it, right? So um, we're here with the Hill Kimura Truther of Truthers, Rod Meldrum, who's going to tell us why um, the Book of Mormon geography matters. That's the subject of our conversation today. And I actually wanted to dive into you with this. Um, sorry, dive into you. Sorry. I wanted <laughs> Go to right dive ahead. Yeah, I wanted to dive. <laughs> Dive into Who are you this working for you. anyway? Yeah, here. exactly. <laughs> it sounds like a bad animation from the 1990s, right? So um, I wanted to dive into this topic with you because um, I admit I'm a little bit agnostic here. Uh, I I don't care whether or not the Book of Mormon happened in Mesoamerica or whether it happened in North America. Uh, the purpose is to get you to come under Christ. At the same time, though, faith cannot exist in a place that is irrational. And if it's irrational to say that, oh, the Book of Mormon uh, geography could have happened here. Uh, the historicity of the Book of Mormon actually does matter. So I'm kind of caught between both these worlds of caring and not caring. All right. So um, I would appreciate your insight because you have launched an entire movement based on staking your claim that the Book of Mormon did not happen in Mesoamerica amongst the proto Mayans, like many academics suspect, and the Olmecs, like many other researchers suspect. You place it square in North America amongst uh, tribes and populations like the Hopewell and the Adena, and so on and so forth. So, so why? Can't both those truths exist simultaneously? And why does the Book of Mormon geography matter? And why do people need to vote Republican in order to be a Heartlander? <laughs> no, I'm just telling you. <laughs> so, so why does Book of Mormon geography matter, bro? <laughs> well, there, there, there's several different things, and, I, and I, I'm going to have Brill uh, address a couple of things here in a little bit. But, uh, but th- th- when it comes down to it. It matters on numerous levels, okay? Uh, first off, if it's not an actual real history, if it's actually an inspired fiction, I mean, it basically takes out the the, found, the very foundations of the Book of Mormon itself, which it claims to be a history. Uh, okay. Also, uh, when it comes down to it, uh, you know, if, if you get it wrong, well, one of the, for example, in the Book of Mormon, there's over 550 passages that deal with geography, um, which means that Mormon and Moroni, that the, the the last two that actually did the abridgments of the of the book, um, I think that they put that in there for a reason. So now, if if the uh, if the geography doesn't matter, then why did they put that in there? In other words, are we saying that 550 passages don't matter? And if that's the case, then what other passages do you think don't matter? Which other passages should we ignore? You bring up a good point. Okay, so I don't think we should ignore any of those passages. I think they all matter. And I think that they wanted us to figure it out. <laughs> so that's part of the reason why they have it in there. Now, I have to say, though, that um, it's, it's, it's really too bad that we don't, we don't have the, the 116 pages that got lost. Okay. Because I'm really hoping that if someday they ever, they're ever found, that like the first five pages are like, okay, this is this is map A goes with you know this particular section. Oh map yeah, B, they forgot you know, the map. The map dude. section, man, <laughs> it's missing. <laughs> it would be so awesome if it was there. Okay, but there's there's several other things, and that has to do with um, when it comes down to the prophecies in the Book of Mormon. Um, 
And this, if this actually you comes mean down the Book to, of Mormon the, that was translated the, from golden appearing plates that were probably really made of Tumbaga that only comes from Mesoamerica, right? Those plates? No, no, no. Tumbaga no, is, a, is, is, is a metal that can be from anywhere, but you have to have smelters to do it, and they didn't have smelters in Mesoamerica until long after the Book of Mormon. So how are they making Tumbaga? You took the bait when you and don't did even a good job with it. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, so where were we going with that? <laughs> like, dude, like, like, just like, I'm just fishing with Rod Meldrum, just fishing you know <laughs> so why book of mormon geography matters that's what yes, we were talking yes. about and, uh, and and basically so the uh, so the situation there was that uh, when when it comes down to these prophecies in fact i was going to mention that because i asked this question to a lot of different audiences all around the world i said what why what is the purpose of the book of mormon and most people will say well it's to testify of jesus christ right which obviously that it does but you right? can't testify if it's not real right but 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 pull up uh, pull up uh, the doctrine and covenants in section in section two the lord tells joseph smith what the real purpose is okay and, it, and it's not quite what we've been told i mean it, it obviously that's a part of it okay so you said doctrine and covenants doctrine chapter covenants, two uh, sec, i think it's yes yeah, chapter two towards the end of the chapter i'm sorry i believe you uh, meant section two yeah, I, section, don't use I say yes i did if I you did were more that, righteous yes. not only would you would be mesoamerican but you would call them sections <laughs> not chapters okay is it section no. two or section three it must be section three here so anyway. here's section three it says revelation given yeah, to joseph smith and, the prophet go down uh, towards oh. the bottom okay towards the bottom there. verse 19 okay right yeah, here for this very purpose are these plates pre preserved so what is the purpose he's going to tell us now he says which contain these records that the promises of the lord might be fulfilled which he made to his people i can't see his that he people. made to okay. his people which he yeah, and then yeah, keep going to verse, go up a little bit more for verse 20 and, and the, the verse 20 that. says and that the lamanites might come to the knowledge of their fathers and they might know the promises of the lord that they may believe the gospel and rely right. upon the merits of jesus christ and be glorified through the faith in his name and through the okay repentance, so, they so might be let's go back to it. so what's the purpose so that the lamanites might be be uh, able to know their history and that they are the covenant people of God, right? And there's promises twice in there. It talks about these promises. Is it possible that we can actually learn more about the geography of the Book of Mormon by studying the prophecies for which the church, which the Book of Mormon was actually said to be? This, this is the purpose that the Lord gave it, right? Yeah. Could we learn more about the, the geography through the through studying the prophecies and the promises than we can by speculations about narrow necks of land and volcanoes and and whirlwinds and all that kind of stuff? So uh, if you're firing on all five cylinders of the Hansen five model of epistemology, the answer would be yes, because there's more than uh, just naturalistic right. observation as a way to find okay. truth. If you're only firing on one of those cylinders, which basically is naturalistic observation and the second cylinder of reason and deduction, right. then uh, you might be attracted to other methodologies uh, right. that don't include those um, those other cylinders. Right. Keep going. In order to have a really powerful geography, you need to be able to fire on every cylinder. In other words, linguistics, uh, anthropology, archaeology, uh, animals and plants, uh, etymology. You know, I mean, but but this is one that I think was gotten has gotten left out, and this is actually one of my primary things. And that is that, uh, what are these prophecies? I looked for books. <laughs> I looked for anybody who had really done a deep dive into these prophecies in the Book of Mormon. And I found out that nobody had done it. So actually, Bruce Porter and I ended up uh, doing a, a book called Prophecies and Promises. And it turns out, Cardinal, there's actually 36 prophecies in the Book of Mormon about a modern, a, a latter-day nation that was going to be established, lifted up, raised up, and 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 so forth. And they give these 36 prophecies about that nation. They said it would be a mighty Gentile nation. God save above America. All other nations. <laughs> they said that it would be um, <laughs> it would be a land of prosperity. It said it would be a land of security. It talked about it being a land of liberty. Eight times they called it the land of liberty. They said it would be a nation among other nations. So they're not talking about all of the Americas here. They're talking okay. about a specific nation that was going to be stand, you know, set up. So if you take a look at all 36 of those prophecies and promises, there's only one nation. Well, th there's another that th fits them all. That can that actually fulfills all those prophecies. Yeah, well, there's another layer. So in this there. is like the hashtag America geography yeah. model. You America know what I'm model. Saying? I want to grow a mullet and buy a four by four <laughs> as I'm just reading my Book of Mormon. Heck yeah! Like doing motocross now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, <laughs> what, one one of the things that that I think you were going to mention, but just in case you didn't, yeah. is that back then, I mean, what was the United States during that time during Joseph Smith's time? 
uh, it was uh, basically east of the Mississippi, for lack of a better term. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so you were in the far west when you came to basically Missouri. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, it was nothing else. In it, fact, it that's was, why Missouri built well, that Indian big giant territory. arch, because that's the gateway to the West. Right. Yes, right. exactly. And so how is it that you're prophesying that this is going to be a nation among nations and that this is the promised land? And you can't foresee, like Joseph Smith, you know, if, if this is all fiction, then how is he going to foresee that this is going to be an entire nation of the United States of America all the way to California? Uh, That's true. Uh, Manifest Destiny had not been completed yet. It had only been 50 years since Lewis and Clark had even discovered the 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 west coast of the united states of america through their explorations and travels and so on and so forth of course there's historians that are like screaming into the laptops right now it was 63 years <laughs> you know or whatever <laughs> but you guys get my point yeah. so okay keep going but, okay so so why is all this important because if we don't at least if we can't at least identify what nation it was that they were prophesying to then what's the point of the prophecies Ah. Because half of the prophecies are about the land. The other half are about the people of that mm-hmm. land. They said it would be a Gentile people who came over out of captivity. They talked about uh, you know, that they would establish this land of liberty. Um, it, and and when, you, when you put it all together, if the Book of Mormon is a book, of Mor- is a book about Guatemala, for example, then the prophecies in the Book of Mormon relate to the people of Guatemala. And so we're, we're off Good the hook. Good people. <laughs> we're off the hook, right? But the thing is, is that if you go back in time, all the way back to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, the first land of promise was where? The first, the first land of promise wasn't in the Old Testament. It's actually mentioned in the Pearl of Great Price in Moses. Oh, okay, yeah. And uh, and, and and essentially, what it says is, is that uh, that the that the that Adam had the, the first land of Moses, land of promise, was named after Adam's great grandson, whose name was Canaan. And then in section 101 in the Doctrine and Covenants, I think it's section 101. I hope nobody quotes me on that one, but I think it's we'll look it 70. Up. But 101, it says that three years before his death, I think it's 101 verse uh, 53. Okay. Uh, but it says, before three years before his death, Adam calls all of his righteous posterity together at this place called Adam on Dayaman to give them his last blessing. Well, I haven't heard of the two Adam on Dayaman theory yet. <laughs> that hasn't been invented yet oh, by, by, uh, savage, scripture, by Scripture man. Central. So if, okay. if, if Adam on the Yaman is the actual Adam on the Yaman, and there's not two of them, as may be proposed now by Scripture Central, they, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I'm sorry. I, you know, I, I have to say Scripture Central. Um, <laughs> you know, we're on the same team. You know, the bottom line is that it's kind of like we're on the same team. This is the way I look at it. Now they may look at me as you know the devil incarnate. <laughs> okay, but but uh, dude, I do. We're have on the to same say. team, but I'm just saying, if we're on a football team, okay. Uh huh. It's kind of like we're arguing about whether we're going to take it up the middle or around the end or do a long bomb. And while we're sitting there arguing on the sidelines, Satan and his team is kicking our behinds down the field. I do have to say, the um, for me, part of me just looks at this and I'm just like, you know what? If some people think it happened in North America and that inspires us to do more archaeology in North America, which is woefully absent Right. From yeah. our scientific yeah, right. zeitgeist. Yeah. Okay. Then so be it. And if there's some people that, you know, this inspires them to search more I- I- into the proto Mayans and the Aztec culture, like it, 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 that is woefully absent. Go look at pictures of Chichen Itza a hundred years ago. It was covered in bushes, yeah. you know? And so there's, there's so much that needs to be done everywhere. I just look at now as a point in time where like it doesn't matter. But I got to tell you, there are consequences of taking a position on whether or not the Book of Mormon happened in North America or in South yeah. America or Central America. Just by having Jonathan Neville on the show, <laughs> I had people calling me up with profanity laden text messages, <laughs> like literally like refusing to be my friend anymore for yeah. having talked once to Hannah Stoddard last year and having Jonathan Neville in this studio. And I'm sure yeah. now that the Heartlander of Heartlanders, you know, with a mustache, a very tasteful <laughs> yeah. Burt Reynolds mustache, well, well, by the way. Well groomed. Well, you know, yes. well groomed. Yes. That now, like it is, that is one, that is the straw that broke the camel's back. How dare you talk to these, uh, like, I don't know if heretic is a word strong enough. So I, I think that it is true that we're all on the same team, but man, there are some subcultures in our church that are just like, whoa. I, I would have never seen this having, I'm, I'm a convert to the church. Okay. Like yeah. I, I joined the church 10 years ago 
And and I I mean I grew up I'm from East LA I was born in East LA was raised in Los Angeles fun part of town bro <laughs> yeah I was <laughs> raised cool. you know and and so I I bump shoulders with with gang members and bikers and and all sorts of people and then I came do you and, hand them a Book of Mormon and, dude and so well now I do <laughs> talk about it. yes I do. <laughs> as a matter of fact <laughs> <laughs> but but like I I see this other world and I'm like. What in the world? I didn't realize there was so much more contention in this area because of it. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, yeah. tell uh, keep going, my man. Yeah, we, so, we, got so, some more, we got some more time. Well, keep I, it I, let me t- give you a couple of examples of why this is a problem. Okay. okay. Well, first off, does truth matter? I mean, does it really matter whether where it happened? Or what, you know, yes. A lot of people say virtue is its own. It doesn't reward. matter where it happened. It only matters that it happened. And and my feeling is is no, it matters because number one, we need to know what nation it is that they're prophesying to or or the prophecies fall flat. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. If they're prophesying right. fair, to fair. the Malaysians, um, then then why do we care about that in America here, right? Or or in Belize or anywhere else. Um, another thing is is that uh, when you have a geography and you've and you've committed to that, and then you find out science and and on archaeology and astronomy and so forth that all disproves it, and all of a sudden you go, wait a minute, you know, where's the elephants? Where's the horses? You know, um, where, where's the metal working? I mean, the, the time frames don't match in the Book of Mormon. The Mayans were here long before Lehi and his family were here and say, well, that, okay, so what happened was Lehi and his family came and assimilated with the Mayans. The problem is, is that that goes exactly against the Book of Mormon story, which right. basically says that Lehi and his family arrived here. There's no indication they had to fight their way into the land of Nephi when Nephi and those that followed him went up there. They just went up there and they made Nephi the king. Makes really not much sense if they were assimilated into a Mayan culture. That they would make Nephi the king. Why would you do that? You have thirty people go into a, a civilization of twenty thousand people, and all of a sudden they make one of the thirty people the king. And then they also, hey, hey, everybody line up because these guys they practice the law of Moses, and so all you men, line up. It's time for your circumcision. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna go over well. well. That's gonna get clipped. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got twenty thousand guys are like start going. Uh, I'm heck literally, no. I'm literally I'm not just doing gonna, that. <laughs> I'm literally just gonna put that circumcision comment in the intro of this video. <laughs> so as people are just sharing it, there's Rod Meldrum it's, looking like he's just recommending circumcision for grown adults. <laughs> you know, going back that, to the it, Hebrew way. It's, it's a Hebrew way, man. It's a, it's a Hebrew <laughs> thing to do, right? Okay. So they're they're practicing the law of Moses, which also requires certain plants and animals. We'll get into that later. But uh, but the the bottom line is that that so the church has been kicked in the teeth over and over and over again because of the the shortcomings of the Mesoamerican model to actually answer just na- just normal questions, like for example the metallurgy question. Another big one was uh, was the the, uh, the History Channel did a documentary a few years ago called Who Really Discovered America. Okay, and and they actually talk about the Book of Mormon in the church yeah. in this in this uh, in this documentary. And really, it, they and, do. and and they yeah. contacted it's probably awesome. probably from somebody from Scripture Central, <laughs> that, that former former you know before Scripture Central. Do we need to send like a massage gift certificate? <laughs> to, who's, who's that poor director uh, yeah, of Scripture Central? Guy, yeah. We're gonna just have to send him a massage <laughs> envy gift certificate. So that like, you know, once yeah. he's done watching these videos and people are done sending him TikTok <laughs> clips and yeah. things like that, he can just go and relax because I'm yeah. sure he's a good guy. <laughs> well, the History Channel actually put this thing out um, and they, they, they had to contact somebody from who they thought represented the church about where the Lehi's, Lehi's Ocean Voyage landed. So we know that they took off from the Saudi Arabian Peninsula, right? But they landed someplace, um, in, in, according to this documentary, they landed on the west coast of Central America, which they obviously got from people who are espousing the Mesoamerican model. Yeah. And then they have uh, experts on world ocean currents and so forth to get on. And they say, yeah, a ship could make it, but a ship would make it with dead people because there's no way you could go across the world's largest ocean at its widest point to make a west coast landing on, on Central America. It's never been done before. It's never been done since. But yet, with the Heartland research, we have a Phoenician ship at replica called the the, uh, the Phoenicia, that literally it's a 600 BC replica ship that was made by non Mormons and captained by a, a captain by the of the Royal Navy, and they actually did the voyage leaving from Saudi Arabia Peninsula. And guess what? They couldn't go east. They couldn't go that direction. They, 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 the winds and the currents were contrary so bad. 
that uh, there was actually a different ship that actually called the Jewel of Muscat, and they tried to make it. And they had to be actually, <laughs> they had to be towed behind a powered powered ship to be able to really? get to, from there to Indonesia. Wait, and you guys, you guys. Oh, we'll talk about the Phoenicia reason? ship. Oh, yeah, we we actually own the ship now. Oh, get ship. out of and, town! And, and, listen, you're, you're you must you're the fun uncle that know. shows up with like snowboarding <laughs> stuff <laughs> yeah. and snowmobiles to the Christmas party. Yes, and now when when people go to Los Angeles and we hit you know Santa Monica Pier, you're the dude that shows up in a 600 BC. <laughs> now that is Phoenician an object ship, lesson. Baby. <laughs> that is an object lesson. Please tell me when the seminary students. <laughs> are studying this in the Book of Mormon, you straight up bring the boat. Well, yeah. what so something that yeah. he's not mentioning right now is yeah. that okay. well, we, we don't have time. I, we so we just yeah. got uh-huh. back from Washington, D.C., meeting with the ambassador of Tunisia yeah. because they see the validity of this work and research that we're doing with the Heartland Research Group. There's yeah. there's so much evidence and there's so much research that has not been that hasn't been uncovered that proves the validity of the Book of Mormon here in North America. Like when, yeah. we're, when we say America, we're not talking Americas. We're talking North America in the heartland. The United States. Okay. I, I, I got I to gotta say one last thing if we have time. And yeah, hit it. Hit it. And, 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 I, and I, oh man, I, I, I hate to kind of feel like I'm hammering on Scripture Central here. But uh, but Captain V Captain uh, Beale. Philip Beale who 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 captained these two voyages that have proven out Lehi's ocean voyage, um, the first one and then also the Mulekite voyage. He's actually done both of these voyages have been literally done in a 600 BC ship, and most members of the church are completely uninformed and unaware of that happening. Like the difference between square sails of the yeah. Phoenician ships and triangular sails of the Latin ships yes. that came out yeah. about 200 years later. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so we brought Philip Beale to Scripture Central and they recorded him for three and a half hours and every which way they could tried to get him to, to say that there's some possible way that a wooden sailing ship could make it to Central America from the Saudi Arabian Peninsula. Well, this, you have to understand that this guy is probably the foremost expert in the world on ancient maritime sailing. And he told them straight up, he says, there's there's really no way to get there um, without basically going all the way down maybe to, to Antarctica. And, 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 and maybe if the currents were just right and so forth, he might be able to do it. He says, but but the route that we actually did makes so much more sense. Guess what? That, that was almost four months ago when they recorded that. And, how, and has that ever been released by Scripture Central? No, they have literally ditched it. <laughs> They, really? They don't want to admit that Captain Philip Beale has basically said that their route to the new world doesn't even work. But yet we, we, we just interviewed him and we're going to actually put that out so you actually see the foremost expert in the world who is not a member of the church actually say that not only is it possible, it's been done in a 600 B.C. ship. And how did Joseph Smith possibly know this? And, and mind you, he, he's not... He, this this guy he's he's a captain of the Royal Navy and this isn't his only voyage that he's done on a sail he's gone on many other voyages on many other ancient ships across the Indian Ocean the the Atlantic Ocean this guy knows what he's talking about okay now yeah. I have my but response they, but they've been deeply deep deep sixing this information they don't want their people to know what well, Philip Beale said. I am actually going to come up with a devil's advocate <laughs> position against your Phoenician boat yes. and against the premise of this very experiment. But I want to hear more about this boat and I'm going to tell you my opposition to your 600 BC boat theory. As soon as we come back from this brief be- break, we'll be back in a minute. How about the car in the driver's seat? I pick you up, but there's only room for me. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Before you go, please make sure that you like the video, share it with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please let this be the video in which we earn your subscription and that you press the alert button so you're alerted to all of our fun live streams and standalone videos and community posts. Also, if you'd like to help us out, please consider joining the channel. Members get all kinds of cool perks and benefits. They get early access to a lot of our videos and special emoticons and emojis during our live streams and preferential treatment there. It's a lot of fun speaking of a lot of fun we have a super cool discord if you'd like to join our discord 
check us out on wardradio.com. There's a link to the Discord there. Also, you can sign up there for our newsletter. Our newsletter is a lot of fun, and you can put your email address in there. And if you'd like to contribute to the program, please consider looking us up on Venmo or on the Cash app. We're on both of those platforms. Also, if you just want to keep watching more content right about here and probably right about here are going to be some more videos. Please check those out. And as always, for this and more, please make sure that you look us up and check us out at wardradio.com. I bring the energy.